Inside a dust speck like the one on your sleeve, there happened a story you must see to believe. Way up past Wisconsin, where the Great Lake makes waves, lay the small town of Gladstone, the home of the Braves. Ask people who live there, I'm sure they would say, there is nothing like all saints the night of Wednesday. For Be My Disciples was soon to begin. All computers were on and all iPads tuned in. For tonight will be shared the gift that keeps giving. It's the secret to joy and the key to good living. To live Christian life that's not weak but robust, we want to have patience, compassion, and trust. But there is one place, a point where we start. The practice makes ready each true Christian heart. To discuss this fine topic will be apropos, the fountain from which all good qualities flow. The sun did not shine and it rained all the day, so we sat in the church and attempted to pray. I sat with Tiana, we sat there we too. It seemed rather strange with that fish by our pew. I'm not sure how I got here either. Help? Someone? Anyone? We sat and we sat and we sat, 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 and there was a good reason and purpose to that. We both hope to be great disciples, you see, to serve God and neighbors wherever they be. But I did not know how disciples should train, so I sat with Tiana and stared at the rain. Then something went bump. How the bump made us jump. It wasn't a cleaner, the maid or a cat, but a strange sight indeed, the priest in the hat. I know your concern, said the priest in the hat. I know how life works. I can help you with that. You want to be happy while following Jesus, a disciple who is cheerful, who serves well and pleases. You may think it's tough, but it's easier by far than sailing a boat or driving a car. It's what we are made for. It's how God designed us. This lesson tonight's a great way to remind us. The key young disciples keep this in mind. The source of our happiness, simply be kind. Be kind? Be kind, be kind. And please bear in mind the desire to help others if you're so inclined is born of our kindness. That's where service starts. The reflection of love in our God-designed hearts. You said God designed us for kindness. That's true to the day that we die from the day we debut. Our lives will be better if we are just kinder. This lesson will be a helpful reminder. But you say that God designed us to be kind? If we follow our design, we'll find happiness? I'll make it quite clear so you can't misconstrue. God designed us for kindness. I'll prove it to you. From the moment we're born, from the day we arrive, we need lots of kindness for us to survive. As babies, we're helpless. We need constant care. We can't wash our clothes, and we can't curl our hair. We can't reach the cookies on high kitchen shelves. We can't do a thing to take care of ourselves. Our parents will hold us and tell us, don't cry. If it weren't for their kindness, we surely would die. Oh, but later in life, when there's creaks in our knees, when we face all our sufferings, old age and disease, when it's hard to lift boxes or hang up a wreath, we'll stick hearing aids in and take out our teeth. At that point in our lives, so much to impede us, we may even need someone else who will feed us. I get it. When we're babies and little children, we are dependent on the kindness of others. If our parents don't take care of us, we wouldn't make it. 
And when we're old, then we need people to take care of us too. So at both ends of life, we depend on the kindness of others. If at the beginnings and then at the ends, we depend on the kindness of family and friends, why then in the middle, I'll tell you my stance. Should we not act with kindness if we have the chance? Humans need kindness, for this you are known. You need others' care. You won't make it alone. You can ask your priests, your dads, and your mothers. Our happiness is bound to the kindness of others. Jesus talks kindness and how each of us need it. We called his rule golden once he had decreed it. Treat others just like you would want to be treated. You want not to be scolded, or lied to, or cheated. You crave not belittling, bullying, or hurt. You don't want to be called too late for dessert. You want to feel warm, forgiven, respected. You want to feel love, cared for, connected. As you would want others to do unto you, do unto them. Goodwill you will accrue. So really, each one of us has a choice. In our lives, we can choose to be selfish and mean. Or we could be gentle, compassionate, and warm. So if we make the choice to live as God created us to live, then how will we have a better life? If you are kind, then sleep comes quite easily. Is kindness your bag? Then you will wake gleefully. Kind people find that their dreams are most pleasant, like untying the bow on a huge birthday present. If you do kind things, if that's what you do, people will love you. And goldfishes, too. But I have a thought on how the world functions, with anger and problems, with hate and dysfunctions. It leaves people broken and hurt and defensive, and then they act out in ways so offensive. It's hard to be kind in a world such as this. It's as cold as the great oceanic abyss. I know what you mean. I have to admit it. When people are mean, it's almost easy to be mean myself. Before I respond, let me hold you right there. Let's call on an expert who has something to share. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lorax. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. Don't cut them down. Let them grow if you please. Though I admire your environment passion, our lessons on kindness and warmth and compassion. It is true that I speak for the earth and the trees, but I also converse on your topic with ease. It's true. I'm concerned about global warming, but lately a brand new opinion is forming. Each day that you live, you age a bit older, and human relations become a bit colder. We become so efficient, impersonal, and hurried. It's left us depressed, so distant and worried. Our world needs to change. It needs a retooling. Today, I will speak about it. Global cooling. Mr. Lorax, how has the world changed and how has it gotten colder? Once sending love letters was practiced widespread. But today, our friends send a text message instead. Once children spent time with their dads playing ball. But now our backyards see hardly no balls at all. They had fun together, they joked, and they laughed. Today, it is all iPads alone in Minecraft. Lorax, you're right. This cooling's around. Signs of unkindness and coolness around. The world's turning colder, and you know what's what? I'm actually afraid of freezing my... tailfin. It's like a new ice age, these problems I see. But freezing our hearts, this does worry me. Epidemic, depression, and panic attacks. Doesn't surprise the experienced Lorax. The cause of these problems, so often, my son result from detachment and isolation. If you have no friends and feel unprotected, you'll grow to be nervous, or sad, or dejected. And then the response of most people, I think, is to turn just as cold as an ice hockey rink. So what is the best way to warm up this place, to respond to all of the problems we face? 
The way to respond to coldness that's mindless is to put on your smile and respond with warm kindness. Tell them, Lorax, the effects of kind living, and perhaps you'll relieve them of fear and misgiving. I'll tell you the benefits of kindness, fish friend, and then that will draw my remarks to an end. At school, kids learn better with warmth and attention than if there's indifference, apathy, dissension. A child who knows tenderness is happy and grows. Kids thrive with attention. This everyone knows. And if you are sick, the thing you must have is kindness. It's like a miraculous salve. When treated with care by family or pastor, we suffer much less and often heal faster. And in business, wise people reach the conclusion Success without kindness is short-sighted illusion. When bosses who are kind and serve well their clients, they are given more business and remembered as giants. Can I ask you one last question before you go? What if I'm kind to someone and that person just doesn't get any nicer? You ask a good question that deserves a reply. If you run into someone who's a really bad guy, Lorex, what if our kindness just doesn't work and the person continues to act like a jerk? It's not about what is. That's important, you see. Instead, of what's important is about what can be. This is a truth that I beat like a drum. You have to have faith that some change will come. Did someone say faith? I have something to say, something of worth that will soon end this play. A story from Jesus he told in the Gospels, retold by disciples and saints and apostles. To Jesus, our faith is just like a seed that sprouts in the morning, then grows guaranteed. The farmer may plant it, but can't make it grow. It grows by itself, and just how, no one knows. Warm kindness must be its own fine reward. It matters not if you are praised or ignored, because in the end, the kindness will grow. Like the seed in the gospel, cause Jesus says so. Our conversation today has been loaded with worth, so practice more kindness and help save the earth. Now, if you please, for each adult and each pup, with this Bible in hand, I'll try to sum up. We were not born to cause trouble or harm, to cause consternation, dismay, and alarm. We're not made to aggravate, anger, annoy. God made us for kindness. In this, we find joy. The priest in the hat shared the Bible and more. Then he picked up the fish and walked out the door. So disciples, be kind. It helps us to cope with all of our troubles. Our hurt cuts in half and happiness doubles. But this is the most helpful thing you can know. It's all up to you which way you will go. Be kind to others, it's the best chance we've got. For peace and goodwill, give kindness a shot.